right, let, let's get started. So it's a pleasure to welcome Tatsu Masumi, who um, came all the way from Japan. And he's going to tell us about resurgence in quantum field theory. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, it's my privilege to have a chance to discuss our recent works with the experts uh, getting together here. Uh, and I also uh, express my respect for the organizers' efforts to have this brilliant workshop and a very long-term program. And this time I'm discussing the, the resurgence, uh, the application of the resurgence theory to the quantum field theory, uh, which has a broad meaning. So I will uh, make a focus on mainly on the renormalon and the phase transition. And this work is based on the collaboration with uh, these uh, very smart collaborators, and mainly based on the, these two uh, works in these two years. And uh, these two works are unfortunately uh, became the, almost the, some of the last works uh, by uh, Professor Sakai. Uh, so I, uh, oh, it doesn't work. Sorry, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, can I check? Yes. Okay. So, uh, I would this. Uh, I, I would like this talk to be dedicated to the memory of the pro Professor Sakai. So, uh, let me. Uh, begin with the review part. And uh, uh, I think that a lot of good reviews have been already done in this uh, workshop. So I will just uh, give a brief review on the uh, Broil resummation and I, I will comment uh, uh, a bit. Uh, in the quantum theory, uh, the perturbative series is often divergent factorially. So it, it is regarded as asymptotic series. And there is a very good way to construct an analytic function. Uh, it is nothing but a Borel resummation. And the Borel resummation uh, procedure has two steps. Uh, the one is a Borel transform, uh, which gives the convergent series uh, with the uh, uh, finite radius of con convergent, uh, finite uh, convergent radius. And the second step is a Borel resummation uh, which is the uh, uh, Laplace transform of the Borel transform. And uh, sometimes or often the Borel transform has uh, singularities uh, on the Borel plane. And when the, it has singularities on the positive real axis, we have to deform uh, the path, uh, integral path or the integral contour uh, a bit above or a bit below the positive real axis. Then uh, we end up with the uh, Borel resummation of the physical quantity with the imaginary ambiguities. Uh, but this imaginary ambiguity should be canceled uh, by that from the non perturbative contribution. So there should be some non trivial relation between perturbative and non perturbative contribution. So we, can, we may be able to study the non perturbative effect in terms of the uh, perturbative Borel resummation and uh, the non-trivial uh, resurgent structure. So here, let me comment, uh, give a small comment on the Borel resummation uh, because uh, we are going to discuss the cases with the negative coupling constant in this talk. Uh, for negative coupling constant, uh, the integration path of the Borel resummation uh, is a uh, uh, negative uh, real axis so the singularities of uh, the Borel transform on negative real axis for negative coupling constant or on positive real axis for positive uh, coupling constant leads to the Borel non-summability for this definition of the Borel resummation. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we can also redefine uh, T over lambda, lambda is coupling constant, T over lambda as T and for this definition of the Borel resummation, the integration uh, should be performed on the positive real axis uh, like this, uh, even for uh, negative coupling constant. So in this case, only singularities on the Borel uh, transform 
on positive real axis uh, lead to the Bobel non-summability. And I will use uh, mainly this definition uh, of the Bobel resummation. So the singularities on the positive real axis uh, lead to the Bobel non-summability, mainly in this talk. And uh, there are a lot of uh, applications of the resurgence theory to the uh, physical problems. And mainly, uh, I will focus on the asymptotically free field theory and phase transition in this, my, my talk. And the first topic is a uh, resurgent structure in asymptotically free QFT. So as is well known, uh, in the asymptotically free quantum field theory, there is a, a, a specific type of the ambiguities, uh, imaginary ambiguities, which is called infrared renormalon. So let's take the uh, vacuum polarization diagram with the internal chain with a, a momentum k like this and consider the function called Adler function which is the derivative of the vacuum polarization function and the point is that it is uv and ir convergent and uh, uh, because of the existence of the, this uh, internal uh, chain so this quantity uh, includes the, this logarithmic function here uh, which comes from the one loop renormalized uh, contribution, one loop renormalized loop contribution. And uh, it's also uh, regarded as the empty vacuum polarization diagram with the coupling uh, renormalized at the internal uh, momentum. In any case, uh, the, because of the existence of the, this logarithmic uh, function, it leads to the divergent series like this. So th this is the point we have to uh, apply the Borel resummation procedure to that quantity. Then we find the Borel transform has a singularity on the positive real axis because uh, the uh, coefficient beta zero, that which is the uh, first coefficient of the renormalization group, is uh, negative in this case for QCD, us usual QCD. So we end up with uh, uh, Borel resummation with uh, imaginary ambiguity like that. And the point is, it is, uh, uh, it is proportional to the power of lambda QCD, which is the dynamical scale of the uh, QCD. And this uh, imaginary ambiguity or the singularity on the Borel plane are called renormalons, which uh, survive even in large n limit. And uh, because of the existence of the, this power of lambda QCD, it is believed to be related to the low energy physics or the non-perturbative physics of QCD. And now the question is how the renormal ambiguity is canceled. And regarding this problem, there are a lot of, there have been a lot of intensive studies. And to the best of my knowledge, uh, there is a, a difference of the renormal properties between the uh, uncompactified theory like R4 and the compactified theory like R3 cross S1. And in this talk, I will uh, show that this renormal ambiguity is canceled by the combined imaginary ambiguities from different non-perturbative order. So different, how to say, order of the trans series. And I will show also uh, the, the how the renormal properties uh, change during the compactification. So let's discuss the details. So firstly, I will show the essence of our main results. Uh, this is the imaginary part of the quantity I will call the condensate in the two-dimensional sigma model. And uh, uh, A is the IR cutoff, uh, which is produced, uh, which is introduced to uh, regularize the kind of uh, uh, trans series expression. And lambda is a dynamical scale of the, this sigma model. And uh, so the, the power of lambda or the order of lambda corresponds to the order of the uh, non-perturbative exponential uh, because of uh, there is a no, uh, renormalization group re relation. So the, this part corresponds to perturbative Borel resummation and these two terms correspond to non-perturbative contributions from the, the different order of the uh, trans series uh, order. And uh, the, this renormal, this is, uh, so if you, if you use the uh, renormalization group, we, you find that this is nothing but the lambda to the fourth, so it is the non-renormalon, uh, IR renormalon. 
And so this uh, renormal ambiguity is uh, canceled by the uh, combination of the ambiguities at two non-perturbative orders. Uh, one is lambda to the fourth, and uh, which is uh, uh, proportional to exponential minus eta pi over lambda mu. And uh, the other one is uh, lambda to the uh, eighth order, uh, which is proportional to this non-perturbative ex exponential. And the combination of the, these two terms uh, can uh, cancel the renormal uh, ambiguity. And the other point is uh, the ambiguities emerge only the uh, IR cutoff uh, smaller than the dynamical scale, and it originates in the analytic continuation from the uh, IR cutoff larger than uh, dynamical scale to IR cutoff smaller than a dynamical scale. And it is equivalent to the uh, momentum larger than lambda to momentum smaller than lambda. And uh, I also uh, focus on the fact, so there is a binomial type, binomial expansion type resurgence structure, I mean the one minus two, one. And even in the other models, including the two-dimensional CPN minus one model, there is a kind of the binomial expansion type resurgent structure. So this is also a very important point. And finally, I will show you the resurgent structure and the renormal, the order of the renormal are drastically changed by infinitely many Stokes phenomena during a kind of that compactification called the ZN compactification. It is the, uh, the point maybe some people are interested in. So let's look into the details. So here we take the large N O N sigma model on firstly R2 uncompactified theory. And the, the action of the theory is given by this expression. And uh, I introduce uh, the auxiliary field, which is denoted as D. And the effective potential in large N limit is uh, has uh, this expression, and where we introduce the tooth coupling, uh, which is denoted as uh, lambda, small lambda, uh, which is a G square N. And by the UV subtraction with the renormalized coupling, this effective potential is simplified into the, this very simple form, where we also introduce the dynamical scale, uh, capital lambda, which is related to the energy scale and the coupling constant at the energy scale uh, with this uh, renormalization group. And by solving this effective action, so we find the expectation value of the, this auxiliary field is proportional to lambda square. So it means uh, this uh, field works as a dynamical mass. And in this talk, we consider the fluctuation of the, this uh, auxiliary field uh, which is denoted as, uh, denoted as uh, del D, del D. And consider two point function of the, this fluctuation of D like this. And this delta is a Fourier transform of the, this uh, uh, two point function, which is uh, uh, mainly expressed as uh, the function of the P square lambda square, P square over lambda square. Uh, this is denominator is also has this form. And uh, we sometimes consider the, take the x to zero limit uh, where we have to introduce the UV cutoff, which is denoted as A tilde. So uh, this quantity becomes the, this delta square with the UV cutoff, which we call the condensate. And uh, it is, uh, there is a very famous known result of the, this condensate uh, by these people in old days. Uh, so this result is mainly given by the hyperbolic cosine integral of the, this uh, parameter S, S is uh, uh, this one. And uh, so the point is uh, this quantity is unambiguous and IR convergent. And the strategy uh, we will take from here is uh, to decompose this uh, exact result into the expression of the trans series. So that we derive the transverse expression uh, to study a uh, resurgent structure. So we expand uh, the uh, Fourier transform of the uh, two-point function, uh, which is given by in this form, as I said. And uh, with the expansion, uh, it expand it with respect to uh, lambda square p square. And this lambda square p square is nothing but the non-perturbative non exponential uh, for the p larger than uh, 
lambda, p enough larger than lambda, then it becomes small, so we can define the kind of the trans series expression. And, and it leads to the trans series expression, at least at the momentum uh, space. And in the end, when we uh, performed integration, we have to analytically continue to the p smaller than uh, dynamical scale, and it leads to the emergence of uh, imaginary ambiguities. And this procedure enables us to imitate or to mimic uh, semi-classical expansion. And there is also the other way to extract the trans series expression from the exact result directly, but in this talk, I will mainly uh, use uh, this method. So uh, let's expand uh, this uh, Fourier transform of the two-point function with respect to lambda square over p square and a coupling constant. And let's uh, remind ourselves that uh, there is a, the kind of relation. So this quantity is nothing but uh, non-perturbative exponential. And uh, the denominator of the uh, Fourier transform of the two-point function is expanded as shown here. Then we obtain the trans expa expa expansion of this uh, delta. And uh, it is given by uh, this expression. And it includes uh, the non-perturbative uh, exponentials here. And uh, L stands for the order of non-perturbative exponentials. And here we have the, this FL. So it is nothing but the polynomial of the lambda p uh, coupling constant. It's a bit uh, complicated, but it's nothing but the polynomial of lambda p. So it's really uh, the, the trans series expression in momentum space. Uh, but we here have to perform the uh, integration in the momentum space. So we here introduce the IR cutoff, which denoted as this time small a, uh, t regularize uh, the IR divergence of the, this uh, a coefficient of the non-perturbative uh, order. So for each non-perturbative order, we have the coefficient, which is denoted as uh, C to L. L is order of the non-perturbative exponentials. And it is given by the uh, integration between the uh, IR cutoff to uh, UV cutoff. And the integration is given by this. And to complete this uh, procedure, uh, we expand this coefficient C2L with respect to the lambda A tilde, which is the coupling constant we normalized at the UV cutoff scale. Then uh, we obtain, by using the, this uh, uh, renormalization group relation, we obtain the final result of the uh, expression of the coefficients. And by using uh, the uh, new uh, parameter, which is denoted as T, T tilde, which has a relation with a P here, uh, we obtain the integration result, integration expression of the, this coefficient. And uh, so because of the existence of the singularity on the, this integration contour, we have to need to, we need to uh, complexify the coupling uh, slightly uh, as shown this. Then we find the result of the imaginary ambiguities which come from the each of the non-perturbative order. But we find there is only uh, three orders uh, which give uh, the imaginary ambiguity. This is a lambda to the zero, lambda to the fourth, and lambda to the eighth. And this is nothing but a perturbative order. And uh, so as I said, it is nothing but the known IR renormalons. And uh, this renormal ambiguity is canceled by the combination of the uh, two non-perturbative non orders, lambda to the fourth and lambda to the eighth. And the ambiguities, all of the, these ambiguities only uh, emerge for the A smaller than lambda. And as I said, it means they originate in the analytic continuation from the uh, P larger than lambda to P smaller than lambda. And as I said, there is a binomial expansion like a resurgent structure here. But the problem is uh, how the coefficient lambda to the minus uh, four appear at uh, lambda to the eighth order. So this is the point why, the reason why uh, this renormal ambiguity is canceled out. So let's look into the cancellation mechanism in detail. And to uh, make uh, this purpose, 
uh, we consider the separation of the UV and IR contributions by obtaining the uh, indefinite integral of the, this coefficient C2L. So by using this indefinite uh, integral, uh, the subtraction uh, C2L A tilde minus C2L Kali C2L A given, gives a, a C2L. And uh, I, we denote uh, Kali C uh, for the indefinite integral in this case. And for example, for the perturbative uh, order, uh, the coefficient of the uh, coupling constant, which we will denote small t, small, small t, uh, C0L N is mainly given by the uh, gamma function. So it means the curvy C is uh, expressed as the incomplete gamma function and the sum of the incomplete gamma function. Uh, by using this kind of the indefinite <laughs> integral, so we can look into the how the imaginary ambiguities emerge in each order. So this is the result of the order uh, lambda to the zero. It is a perturbative order. Uh, the indefinite integral curvy C0 has uh, this uh, uh, incomplete gamma function. And by applying the Borel resummation procedure, we obtain this integral or the, this exact result uh, with the uh, uh, log term. And uh, so subtraction between the C0 A tilde minus C0 A, uh, we, ha we find the imaginary part of the coefficient C0. And we find that the, the ambiguity emerges only a smaller than lambda like that. And it is notable that at this region, in this region, the coupling constant at A, I mean lambda, uh, lambda small lambda A, is uh, negative. So because uh, we have the, this relation, and this relation is exact in large end limit in this case, so uh, we obtain the imaginary ambiguity uh, emerging only for a smaller than lambda order, lambda a smaller than zero. And the order, uh, at the order lambda to the fourth, we again have the log term, and it leads to the imaginary ambiguity uh, emerging only for a smaller than lambda again. And the, the order lambda, at the order lambda to the, uh, lambda to the a, the indefinite integral contains, again, this uh, incomplete gamma function. And by using the Borel resummation, we find uh, this integral or the, this uh, function with a log term. And uh, to uh, study the mechanism, let's look into the uh, C, uh, Kali CA, so indefinite integral with the uh, IR cutoff. And for a larger than lambda, or the for uh, positive coupling constant, so there is no ambiguity because the singularity is on the negative real axis. But uh, if you consider uh, the analytic continuation to a smaller than lambda, or the lambda a smaller than zero, so negative coupling constant, we find there is a uh, singularity on the positive real axis, so we end up with the ambiguous results. And by substituting this point to exponential, we find uh, this imaginary ambiguity is proportional to the exponential plus eight pi over lambda a, and it is proportional to the one over, one over lambda to the fourth, not lambda to the fourth, one over lambda to the fourth. And so for this case, uh, again, the ambiguity emerges only for a smaller than zero, or the lambda a smaller than zero. And it is, in this case, it is accompanied by the exponential plus eight pi over lambda a, which is proportional to one over lambda to the four. And this is the total result of the, uh, this condensate. And uh, you can find that there is a three types of imaginary ambiguity. And we can show uh, there is no more ambiguities, for example, from the lambda to the second, or the lambda to the sixth, and more. And as I said, the analytic continuation, p larger than lambda to p smaller than lambda, is responsible for the existence of ambiguity and also the cancellation of the ambiguities. For example, the lambda to the fourth coefficient appears at the lambda to the eighth order because of the, this analytic continuation. And uh, this is a, a schematic figure. 
uh, of the analytic continuation, the transverse expression is defined and obtained only for uh, p larger than lambda. And after that, we have to analytic continua continuation, have to do the analytic continuation. Then we obtain the imaginary ambiguity at uh, this uh, region. So we also obtain the results uh, of the imaginary ambiguity for the uh, usual two-point function without taking x to zero. So in this case, uh, this, ex uh, this expression, imaginary part of the two-point function is uh, uh, expanded as uh, L. L is the uh, order of the non perturbative expo exponentials, the same one. And also N bar, N bar is order of X square. So this expression is a uh, uh, OPE type expression. And again, we have, uh, we find this coefficient exactly, we find uh, ex uh, exact expression with this coefficient A L N bar, which is given by this form. And if you look at it uh, in detail, for each uh, uh, n bar, which is the order of x square, so there is an exact cancellation of the coefficient. For example, for n bar uh, equal uh, zero, there is a cancellation minus one, two, minus one. And for one, so there is also the cancellation uh, regarding this L. So uh, in, in the case of the uh, correlation function, so we, we again find uh, this kind of the binomial expansion type uh, cancellation uh, mechanism. And we can apply the, the same or the similar procedure to the large NCP n minus one model. And we here first consider the condensate of the field strength, which is given by uh, this expression. It is a toy model version of the gluon condensate. And uh, these are result on R2 and this is a result on uh, R1 cross S1 with ZN twisted uh, boundary condition with uh, this uh, special condition. And the both cases uh, have the binomial type, uh, binomial expansion type resurgence structure for R2, uh, one, minus four, uh, one minus four, one minus four, six minus four, one. And for the twisted uh, compactified case, uh, one minus three, three, one, like this. And uh, the other thing I want to focus is the uh, ZN twisted compactification uh, drastically changes the structure, the cancellation structure itself and uh, the structure of the renormalon itself. For this case, this is uh, lambda to the fourth, but uh, for compactified case, it is uh, lambda to the third over L. L is a compactification circumference. So there is a very big difference. So what happens in the, during the compactification? Uh, the answer is that the during uh, compactification, the resurgent structure and the renormal structure uh, drastically changes where the Stokes phenomena occur every time one of the Kaltzer Klein masses, which is denoted N tilde over R here, uh, becomes larger than the dynamical scale uh, lambda. So let's look into that one example here. So uh, it is, uh, uh, again, the two-point function in the CPN minus one model. And uh, there is uh, this step function here. And uh, L is uh, order of the non perturbative exponentials, again. But N tilde is KK mode, uh, in the KK mode index. And uh, so every time one of the Kaltzer Klein uh, masses uh, get over uh, the dynamical scale, so there is a kind of the Stokes phenomena. And the infinitely main Stokes phenomena uh, during compactification change the renormal ambiguity from the order lambda to the fourth to order lambda to the third uh, divided by R. R is a uh, compactification radius like this. So this is a schematical, uh, again, the figure or the movie. So, so let's consider uh, the R and uh, uh, firstly, we consider R smaller than one over lambda. In this case, the imaginary part of the uh, no, renormalon, renormalon uh, is given by plus minus lambda to the third over R. And uh, let's go to the next uh, region, which uh, where uh, the R is uh, larger than one over lambda. Then uh, there is a, uh, the one term add, added to this uh, renormalon. Uh, ambiguity, 
And uh, when it goes over 2 over lambda, uh, another one is added to this renormalon ambiguity. Then we uh, find a uh, one by one uh, term comes into when you uh, go over the uh, 3 over uh, n over lambda, n bar over lambda. Then finally, uh, we have to take sum over uh, all the terms. Then it leads to the uh, renormal ambiguity uh, with a plus minus lambda to the fourth. So this is the mechanism of the change of the renormal structure and uh, uh, cancellation, cancellation structure in this compactification. Uh, and so let me summarize what we find. The renormal ambiguity in large n O n model uh, on R2 is canceled by the combination of ambiguities at the different non-perturbative order. And uh, these ambiguities emerge only for the uh, cutoff scale, IR cutoff scale, smaller than uh, the dynamical scale, and as a result of the analytic continuation. And this analytic continuation produces imaginary ambiguities uh, with uh, lambda to the minus four factor at lambda to the eighth order and leading to the cancellation of the ambiguities. And 2D sigma models, including CP and minus one model, has a similar resurgent structure with the binomial expansion type. And the finally, the dwelling compactification, the resurgent structure and the renormal on property the drastically changes due to the infinitely main, uh, many Stokes phenomena. Okay, the next uh, theme is uh, phase transition and resurgence. So uh, first order phase transition is uh, known to be understood as anti-Stokes phenomena, which we uh, explain later again. So it is nothing but the change of the dominant saddles or the dominant stationary points. And uh, so this kind of the anti-Stokes phenomena is encoded uh, of course, in the perturbative series too, uh, because there is a, uh, how to say, correspondence between, between the thimble decomposition and the Borel resummation. And this picture is consistent to the Li and zero picture too. And uh, recently, uh, there is a work on the second order phase transition, uh, which is discussed in the localized uh, supersymmetric QED. So now uh, the question is uh, whether uh, the second and the higher order phase transitions can be understood in terms of the thimble decomposition or resurgence theory. So before going into the details, uh, we review uh, the definition of the Stokes phenomenon and anti-Stokes phenomenon. Uh, Stokes phenomenon is uh, the change of the intersection numbers. So they are the imaginary part of the subtle, imaginary uh, part of the uh, subtle action uh, are, gets uh, identical, and it leads to the research, non-trivial resurgent structure. On the other hand, uh, anti-Stokes phenomenon uh, stands for the change of the dominant saddles, where the real part of the subtle actions uh, get identical, and as I said, it leads to the first order phase transition. And for the study of the uh, second order or the higher order phase transition, we take uh, one example. Uh, this is a 3D n equal 4 uh, U1 supersymmetric gauge theories on uh, S3. Uh, we don't need to uh, uh, stick on the stick to the details of the this theory, but uh, I have to uh, uh, focus. There are three parameters, including the FI parameter, which is denoted as eta and the number of the hypermultiplets, which is denoted as NF, it's a kind of the flavor. And uh, the last one is the mass. And, and after the localization technique uh, applied, uh, the, this theory uh, includes only one variable, which is the Coulomb branch or the Coulomb branch parameter denoted as sigma. And after the localization, the partition function is expressed as the integral with respect to this uh, Coulomb branch parameter sigma, as shown here. So the effective action uh, regarding this uh, sigma is given by uh, this expression. And it, it has uh, this uh, overall factor of NF. So it, it, it can be seen as a large N 
or the large NF type theory. And uh, Ruth and Tilts, uh, in five years ago, uh, applied the subtle point approximation to this theory in tooth-like limit. Uh, tooth-like limit means uh, uh, the limit of the NF to infinity with the uh, eta over NF, which is denoted as small lambda fixed. And they find uh, all the subtle points, all the stationary points, stationary points, which are expressed as shown here. And they also find there is a second order phase transition at the, this critical point, lambda c, called one over uh, sinh m, uh, where the second derivative of the free energy jumps like this. So, so there is a second order phase transition. So let's study uh, this uh, theory from the viewpoint of the left jet symbol decomposition. And as I said, the partition function and the effective action uh, are them. And uh, we know that all the subtle points. And here, the coupling constant is uh, corresponding to the 1 over nf. So uh, the perturbative series corresponds to 1 over nf expansion. And the uh, argument of g square corresponds to the argument of nf. And th this is the uh, simple result. So for subdominant uh, region, so lambda smaller than lambda c, the, so for this case, only one uh, subtle point contributes to the uh, partition function. And however, there are uh, a kind of the pair subtles like this. And uh, at the critical point, these pair subtles collide like that, then scatter at the scattering angle pi over two, 90 degree. And after this collision uh, for the super dominant region, so an infinite number of subtle points contribute to the partition function. There are very big difference. And at the collision point or the, at the critical point, so there is a collision, so it means uh, both imaginary part of the subtle actions and uh, real part of the subtle actions get identical for pair subtles. So it means there is the simultaneous uh, Stokes and anti-Stokes phenomena. So, uh, so at the critical point, the two of pair subtles collide and scatter with the scattering angle pi over two. So it means both Stokes and anti-Stokes phenomena simultaneously occur at the, this uh, second order phase transition point. And of course, uh, in principle, it is encoded in the collision or the, some change of the singularities in the Borel transform of the, this theory in, in terms of the one over NF expansion. Or uh, sometimes we need to uh, use a PADE approximation so it means second order phase transition or the higher order phase transition can be detected from the perturbative series too. So uh, from uh, this result, we, we got a, a kind of a lesson. So, and we propose a theorem. So assume the free energy or the uh, partition function uh, has expression as shown here. It is just a, a single variable integral with this kind of a large N type action. And in this case, uh, the N subtles collide with, when N subtles collide with the angle beta pi, so we here, we assume there are uh, infinite or the finite sets of the N subtles in the uh, space, in this sigma space, uh, then uh, phase transition uh, of order sailing function of the N plus one times beta occurs. So in the case of the, the previous uh, theory, SQED, uh, n equal two, n was two, the two subtles uh, collide, and the beta was uh, one over two, so uh, they, they become uh, three over two, and the setting function of the three over two is two. So second order phase transition is predicted, and really there is a second order phase transition. So the simple model phase transitions are understood in terms of the, this kind of the symbol decomposition, and it means that phase transitions, uh, in principle, can be detected from the perturbative series too. And uh, we don't have enough time to prove in detail this theorem, so this is just a sketch of the proof. 
Firstly, we remind ourselves of the definition of the phase transition order when the free energy uh, around uh, the critical point, which is denoted as lambda c, uh, is expressed as this form. Then the order of the phase transition is the sailing function of the, this uh, power lambda. The lambda, uh, delta lambda is, uh, sorry, the gamma, sorry, gamma. Delta lambda is a deviation from the uh, critical point, and the gamma is a kind of the power here. And in this case, the phase transition is order the sailing function of gamma. And in our case, there is a collision of the n solids. So the action around the collision point, which is denoted uh, as uh, uh, sig sigma c, uh, should be uh, n plus one polynomial of the del sigma. Del sigma is del deviation uh, from uh, sigma c. And uh, co each coefficient should be uh, the power of the del lambda like this. And the condition so that the solid point equation has a root with a degeneracy n leads to the very strong uh, restriction on the coefficient around here. And ni for one, two, three, four, n should be zero. On the other hand, n a, n plus one, the coefficient for the uh, lambda sigma to the n plus one should be non-zero. So, Solving the uh, solid point equation, we find the relation between the del sigma and the del lambda, uh, which is given by this simple uh, relation, power relation, with the power uh, beta. And uh, in this case, so this is the kth uh, solo. Let's consider uh, it will be the it is kth solo. And each of the n solos acquires a phase minus one to the beta because it has a, uh, the power beta, and when lambda, uh, delta lambda changes from negative to positive, uh, this gets a minus one beta uh, phase. And uh, it also means that the n solos collide and scatter with an angle beta pi because it obtains this, uh, it acquires this uh, phase. So this is a scattering angle. And by substituting this uh, delta sigma k, into the effective action. The effective action for k solo is expressed as this form. And at the point of the collision, there should be uh, the simultaneous occurrence of the Stokes and anti-Stokes phenomena. So there should be a jump of the uh, free energy like this. And as I said, it is nothing but the phase transition of the order sailing function of n plus one times beta. So uh, let me uh, uh, rephrase it. That this theorem says, uh, assume the action is uh, in expression as this form. And this is a very simple toy model. But for this case, the, when n solos collide with the angle beta pi, there should be the phase transition of order sailing function of the n plus one beta. And where the Stokes and anti-Stokes phenomena simultaneously occur. Okay, and uh, I think this is a very good is example. So if you look at uh, this early integral, I think you can be convinced of this theorem. Okay, this is uh, early integral, uh, and the action is given by this expression. And for this case, we have the two solos, uh, which are denoted as sigma plus and sigma minus, sigma plus, uh, sigma minus, sigma plus, and uh, at uh, lambda c equal zero. So let, let's consider uh, uh, the cases lambda changes from negative to positive. And then lambda c at the lam lambda c equal zero, there is a collision of the, these two solos. And after the collision, they scatter with the angle pi over beta like that. And the collision point of sig is sigma c equal zero. And at this collision, so there is a free energy jump like that because uh, for subdominant region, the only this subtle contribute to the partition function, while after the collision for uh, super dominant region, so both of the subtles come to contribute to the uh, partition function. So there is a second order phase transition because uh, this uh, power is three over two and the side sailing function of three over two 
uh, leads to uh, is in this case two in this case two. So that there should be second order phase transition, and this fact can be read from just the number of the collision solos and uh, scattering angle. In this case, the number of collision solos is two, and the scattering angle is uh, pi over two. So the n times uh, n plus one times beta is again three over two, and the sailing function of the three over two is two. So we can predict the order of the phase transition. Okay, so contributing solos jump as uh, in this case, sigma plus two, sigma plus and sigma minus, and the two point solo, uh, two solos collide and scatter with their scattering angle pi over two. And as I said, uh, uh, Stokes and anti-Stokes phenomena occur simultaneously. So this uh, early function uh, result is a very good uh, toy model, but uh, a strong uh, res result or the example prototype. And that same thing is seen or the, uh, from the uh, Borel resummation, the Borel transform. And this is a, uh, this is a Borel transform uh, of the, this theory, which is expanded uh, around the sigma minus, so around this point. And we obtain, as you know, that this hypergeometric function and uh, for uh, subdominant region, so there is a, uh, we have this uh, singularity on the uh, negative real axis. Actually, this is a uh, branch cut singularity. And uh, so in this case, uh, we have the origin that which corresponds to the uh, uh, result, uh, co co corresponds to the contribution of the perturbative contribution, the sigma minus. And there is a collision between them at lambda equals zero. Then uh, it's scattered to the, this direction. And uh, so this uh, singularity on imaginary axis uh, means uh, anti-Stokes phenomena <laughs> because for uh, the singularity on the, this kind of the imaginary axis uh, means, so how to say, uh, a kind of the Stokes, anti-Stokes phenomena. So in this case, uh, everything is clear, even in the, this kind of the Boyle transform uh, picture too. So I think it's good time to move to the, uh, the time of the uh, discussion. So let me summarize our result. We have the two parts. So let me remind ourselves of the first part, the resurgent structure in 2D sigma models, uh, the analytic continuation is very uh, essential or the responsible for the cancellation of the imaginary ambiguities there. And the combination of the imaginary ambiguities from the different non perturbative orders uh, help cancel, come to cancel the renormalon ambiguity. And there was a binomial expansion type resurgent structure, at least in 2D model. And the compactification leads, more precisely, ZN twisted compactification leads to the infinite times Stokes phenomenon. And uh, it makes change of the renormal structure and uh, uh, cancellation structure. And the second part was on the phase transition and the resurgence. And the higher order phase transition, including the second order phase transition, are understood as a collision of the solos. And there, are, uh, there is a Stokes and anti-Stokes phenomena simultaneously occur. And it should be encoded in the collision or the a kind of the uh, sudden uh, change of the border singularities, even in the perturbative series. And we proposed the theorem in a solo collision with the angle beta pi leads to transition uh, or the setting function of n plus one beta. And th these are some prospects. Uh, uh, resurgence structure in QCD and QCD-like theories. So we find the binomial expansion type resurgence structure. And the, the question is whether the, this kind of the structure uh, exists in QCD or QCD-like theory. And by assuming such a structure, uh, we may be able to derive the non-perturbative contribution from the perturbative series. And the, the other question is whether we can argue uh, what happens during ZN compactification in QCD or the QCD-like theory. And regarding the phase transition, that we can consider matrix models or the field theories. 
uh, can that theorem be generalized to the multivariable case? And can the theorem be generalized to non-localizable field theories? And uh, the, the other question is if it is applied to the matrix models, including uh, gross bit and Wadia models, uh, which has a, a third order phase transition. So in that case, the, I think the structure of the solid points uh, collisions should be a bit different. Okay. And uh, so let me uh, uh, refer to the other related works uh, in the, uh, re uh, on the resurgence uh, we did in these uh, three years, uh, two years. And the first one is the exact resurgence and quantization conditions uh, from the exact WKB. And we uh, find the exact quantization conditions which obtained from the multi-well uh, and the periodic quantum mechanics by using exact WKB. And uh, this exact there is an exact resurgence structure in these models uh, which are found by using exact WKB. We also find a perturbative and non-perturbative relation, which we call the down relation uh, after the name of Gerald. In some models, is uh, exactly derived by the exact WKB. And the other uh, topic uh, was the resurgence in topological and integrable quantum mechanics model. These two are related to the quantum mechanics. And we consider this kind of a very simple model uh, it's like uh, integrable, it, it's integrable and like a uh, uh, one dimensional Chan Simon model. And uh, it is uh, exactly solved, uh, integrable. And all the non perturbative complex solutions can be found. And we also find that all the uh, intersection numbers associated with uh, these uh, non perturbative complex solutions. So we uh, completely obtain the transitive expression of the, this model and it is uh, completely uh, in good agreement with the exact result of that model. Okay, so uh, I think it's a good time to finish my talk. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Uh, questions? Thank you, Tatsio, for the beautiful yeah. story. Um, I remember in the 2D ON model, uh -huh. there were this argument by Francois David that in dimensional regularization, mm -hmm. it was indeed supposed to be uh, ambiguous. Uh, but I never really understood the argument. Uh, have you guys actually checked in dimensional regularization as well if something mm -hmm. changes? No, not yet. So it is applicable, of course, uh, also to the large end limit. I see. Yeah. So it, it should be. Uh, checked. Uh, thank I you think it was the same condensate, but uh -huh. computed in dimensional regularization. Mm. But dimensional regularization doesn't not, not regularize both the UV and the IR, so mm. he also had to introduce an IR cutoff. Mm. And over that, the story gets murky, but I don't, I never understood it fully. Yeah. I see. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Anybody else? Okay, let me ask a question. In yes. For the sigma models, how important was the large end limit? It, uh, it seems quite important. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I beg your pardon, sorry. So, w where is the large end limit so important? In oh, this? in this case. So, the only point we have used is uh, that we obtain the exact results in the large end limit. But uh, I don't think the large end limit is essential for this, this kind of the structure. So we may be able to find the same structure in the finite end case. I mean, I'm asking because in the, using the TBA approach, mm -hmm. you can do this at any end. Mm -hmm. And you see there's a big difference between 03, 04. Sure, maybe. Mm -hmm. So do you think that question is accessible? So far, I, we do not consider that point, but uh, yeah, it should be addressed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Anybody else? Oh, sorry. Uh, 
Uh, in the SQEDN example you had on the what, S3. What, what is SQED? N. You look at the large flavor limit, if I remember. Uh, actually, in the case of, uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> So in our yeah. case, we actually do not take large NF limit. Uh -huh. So because uh, we consider the one of the NF expansion. So in the part of the series. Right. And uh, so this, how to say, uh, stru structure of the solid point uh, is not in the large, N la large NF limit. This is a finite NF result. Ah, OK. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could also study this from, I mean, presumably you have some differential equations or difference equations from line operator identities. Can you study trans series expansions of those rather than just uh, integral saddle points? E, yes, yeah, it's, it's really, really okay. easy to right. uh, figure out the trans series expression without this result. Okay. Yeah, sure. And does your TOF limit appear as some singular perturbation of the mm -hmm. differential equation. Yeah. What? So you mean the case of the <laughs> solo point approximation? Uh -huh. Yes. So in this case, you know, uh, the structure is a bit different. Right. But if you have the finite NF, so uh, the things becomes clear like that. OK, thanks. Yeah. Else? Okay, let's thank Tatsu again. Thank you very much. We have a coffee break and start again at 11.30.